We have just completed a large clinical trial in patients with pericardial tuberculosis. And this was a clinical trial to test whether steroids reduce death in people with pericardial tuberculosis. Pericardial tuberculosis is a very important form of heart disease in Africa that causes death in about a quarter of people affected with this condition despite treatment with anti-tuberculosis medication. So there has been controversy among clinicians as to whether the addition of steroids to TB treatment in these people with pericardial tuberculosis reduces death. And the reason it has come up is because steroids reduce inflammation and inflammation would reduce the fluid accumulation around the heart and therefore reduce death. The problem is that consultants and specialists were divided on this question. So we did a clinical trial in which half of the patients received steroids and the other half did not receive steroids. And we were very, very surprised with the results. And there were three key findings of the study. The first finding is that, in fact, steroids do not make a difference as to whether you live or die. That was a big surprise. The second finding was that actually steroids did reduce one of the complications of TB pericarditis which is scar formation around the heart, sometimes called constriction. The big surprise was in people with HIV infection, where we found that steroids increased the chances of cancer. And this is a very, very important finding for clinicians because it means that from the results of the study, people with HIV infection who have pericardial tuberculosis should not be given steroids because of increasing the risk of cancer. We also ask ourselves, what are we going to call the group? What, 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 what name are we going to give the group? And that's a very important issue. What you call your study matters because it could be prophetic. So we said we are the MP group. And that means that we are named after the Zulu battalions that vanquished the great armies of Queen Victoria at Isandran. By that we were saying, we were, we were putting together a team that was going to solve this problem by whatever means necessary. And I think the name of the group, the IMPI group, and therefore the IMPI trial, has proven to be important because the, the IMPI warriors have overcome every obstacle that was put in their way to do the first multi-center, multinational clinical trial in the history of the world, which has, in fact, answered those original questions in a definitive way. In 2004, we started the campaign to do the clinical trial, and we wrote some research grants to several organizations, including the Wellcome Trust, the European Developing Countries Trial Program, and unfortunately, after two years of trying, we were turned down. There were two break points that, were, that occurred. The first one was that I went to visit a collaborator of UCT, Professor Salim Yusuf, at the Population Health Research Center in Hamilton. And fortunately, the day before the meeting, uh, Obama was elected as president of the US on the basis of a simple slogan, which said, yes, we can. And when the group met the next day, we said, we have no money. It is now four years down the line since we have been trying to do the study. What are we gonna do? The group said, yes, we can. We can do this study, despite the fact that we have no funding. So January 2009, we, we launched our study on the basis of collaboration and the enthusiasm of individuals. And then we started a funding application to the Canadian Institutes of Health Research with the support of Professor Salim Yusuf, and we turned down. They made a mistake of asking a few questions of us that we could reply to. In other words, we're not turned down now, uh, point blank. We're given an opportunity to answer. And then we went back with an answer. Uh, and the only issue is that it took two and a half years before we were funded. 
by the time we're funded by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, we have done more than 50% of the study. We have done 800 patients en route to 1,400. But quite clearly, the support from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research was decisive in terms of moving us forward because goodwill is not enough. Goodwill needs fuel, and that fuel is called money. And, uh, and it, was, it was important that we got it at that point. And the Canadians then supported us. And then the South African MRC came to support us. And that's what often happens. You reach that break point, that moment when things swing in your direction. And indeed, uh, we then managed to finish the study of 1,400 patients from eight countries. It is the largest study of tuberculous pericarditis in human history. The, the, the last study uh, was done by William Osler, who was the great physician uh, of the late uh, 1800s and the early uh, 1900s, who defined the practice of medicine. He had done a thousand patients with TB pericarditis. So from Osler to Impey, we have redefined the game when it comes to this particular condition. There are several features that are distinct about MP. Uh, the first one is that MP is an investigator-led study from Africa that was conceived by the Africans, that was designed by the Africans with the help of Professor Salim Yusuf and his team, and that was largely funded by institutions from Africa before we received funding from the Canadian Institutes of Health. So it is a study by Africans, of Africans, and led by Africans with collaborators from McMaster University at the Population Health Research Institute in, in, in Canada. So that, 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 that is the key first step. The second uh, issue about IMP is that we did everything that people doing trials, um, according to the books, you ought, you ought not to do. We went to places that had never done trials before and established capacity to do trials. And the third component about MP is that it was done to the highest standards required of clinical trials anywhere in the, in the world, despite the lack of, of funding. And finally, uh, MP has provided a definitive answer to the questions that it set out to answer. The key issue was about finding solutions. So it will take us some time for us to distill key messages, but there are two perhaps that we can take uh, away from this. The first one is the idea of collaboration. This study was a, a collaborative venture of all of the investigators were doing it. Everyone in the study gave something to the study for the common good. Everyone who participated in the study was a winner in the study. Uh, but the second lesson is that um, there is nothing I I impossible I I if we put our mind to it. MP is testimony to the power of a positive attitude that believes that there is no problem that work cannot solve. It, it is utterly a testimony to that idea because we've encountered in doing the study every problem conceivable, but we have found a solution to all of those problems so as so to ensure that we do a study to the highest quality uh, that is required. The question, of course, now that we've done MP, is what do we do next? I think that question can be answered uh, by one uh, line, and that line is that Africa is open for business when it comes to health research. I go to many meetings where people do global studies, and in those global studies, Africa is the black box is often missing and yet people have got the audacity to call those studies global studies there is no longer an excuse now 
EP has created the railroad, has created the infrastructure for doing research studies throughout the sub-Saharan African regions. Not only centers that can do studies to the higher quality, but people who can. We are ready to engage with the world at the, on the terms that at, at the highest level uh, of quality required by science. Uh, the Africans, I think, are ready. The Africans can do it. We're looking for collaborators so that we can work together to solve some of the major health problems that are confronting us. And indeed, from pericardial tuberculosis, we are planning to extend the studies to other heart conditions that affect African people, such as high blood pressure, such as rheumatic heart valve disease, as well as, as other forms of cardiovascular disease and stroke.